Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Infranodus text network analysis tool to visualize and research your thesis to find some interesting insights about it, discover the new connections, identify the main topics and find the structural gaps where the new ideas might be generated. I'm going to use an example of a text from Gal who's writing about autopoiesis and uh, sympoiesis two ways of systems to self-organize. One is kind of autonomous, closed onto itself. The other one is open to others. And she's talking about the different structures that emerge and the different consequences it has for human and non-human collaboration. So first of all, in order to start the analysis, you need to add the text. You can do this using this editor panel here or using the add file button there. You can also go to the applications page and simply import the PDF file which I'm going to do right now. And what happens next is that the text is visualized as a graph. The words become the nodes in the graph and the connections between the words or the co-occurrences become the connections in the graph, the edges of the graph. This allows us to translate any text into a network structure and to analyze it using graph analysis tools which are quite powerful and show us the most influential terms, how they're connected, identify the main topics which are indicated with the distinct colors in this graph and showing us in general what the text would look like if we perceived it from the perspective of looking at it as a network. The first thing that I like to do in my workflow when I analyze my own texts is just to look at the graph itself. And for instance here what I can see is that the word system is overtaking all the others and sympoesis and boundary are quite influential in this graph as well. And also the mind viral immu immunity of this text is low so it means that it's focused too much on one subject. In this case, it's about systems, sympoiesis, and uh, autopoiesis and boundaries. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just uh, some insight about the structure of the text. Sometimes you might want this, this tightly interconnected, focused structure. But at other times, you also want more diverse topics present within a text. So it depends really on the intention that you have. But... This index here provides an interesting insight about this and it's also shown here, network structure biased. If you click on the question mark, you will see the explanation that I just gave for what that means. The next thing is to then start looking at the main topical groups here and, and just to see what the, the, what, what the text is about. In this case, it's about boundaries, uh, definitions of boundaries and information. Okay, so this is about the different kind of boundaries of sympoetic and autopoietic systems, then about the system components, then about sympoiesis and autopoiesis and kind of just exposing the two concepts and then also using the plant and tree metaphor, I think. So how fungus grows and how it's different from the trees and uh, I guess using the two to compare them with the autopoietic and sympoietic structures and then if you click here you will see more topics. So this just gives a, a general overview of the text that you might already have an idea about but it's always very useful when you're writing to have this kind of zoom out view of your text in order to see if you're making the argument that you're working on. The next step that I like to do is to actually delete uh, the most influential words and I can do this by, by clicking this button here or I can also select them from the graph. And this is important because the most influential words in Frenodus are not necessarily the most frequently mentioned ones, although this is often correlated, but they are the ones that have the highest between its centrality. And that means that those are the words that connect the most different topics together. Uh, so, to make an analogy with social networks, uh, these are the words that appear most often between important clusters of meaning in this text. And that means that if we delete them, we will see what's hiding behind them in the graph. So, I can also delete boundary, because we know that the text is talking about this, and 
auto poetic. Okay, then I can see that uh, the new clusters emerge. I can also delete the word component. Basically, until I reach the green square in this field and until my network structure is diversified, which means that several topics are represented. Also, if the graph is a bit overwhelming, it's always nice to filter the nodes and to show only the most influential ones for now. You can also turn on here to show more labels and then to make them smaller. So then we have a slightly more readable graph that we can zoom in and zoom out from and analyze now. So for instance here the main topical group is structure environmental pattern. If we click on this little square here and then here we can see in which context this appears. So it's talking about patterns of organizations, uh, structures, how structures relate. So we know that this text deals with the uh, organizational structures and uh, their relation to the environment and uh, how it's influenced or how it re re reacts to an environment. Then the next topic is Autopoiesis Dempster Social. In the context where it's used is talking about social systems, uh, how it's applied in social systems analysis and the researcher who is actually talking about that. Then we're talking about adaptation and how they're adaptive to change or to external influence or not and then also how how they produce themselves so this is an autopatic system um, and what this ac actually means you know what the word means then we can explore even more topics here so this is the first way to analyze a text is just to have this general overview, look at the structure, delete the main nodes that we have here and see what's hiding behind them. This might give you an idea, for instance, you wanted to write about something else or to represent a certain topic more and it's not shown here. That means that it could be interesting to add some more ideas and you can actually do it right inside and through nodes here adding the text or adding an interpretation on top of it which will save it into a new graph. Okay, the next step is to then uh, look at the insight panel here because this gives you an advice on what you could be thinking next in relation to these topics. Here it proposes us to think of the connection between these two. Producing meaning, so the meaning of the word poesis, how it's producing itself, and uh, information open and adapt. So what could be the relation between, uh, let's say, this self-production of an autopatic system and the meaning that the word carries and the openness or adaptivity of the system? And what's interesting about this question is that it's not something that can have always a, a very obvious answer. That's why those two topics are not yet connected so if you can think of an interesting connection that would link those two sets of words, that means that you would generate a new idea that would connect those two clusters a little bit better than they're already connected right now. So this could be something interesting to think about or maybe just to say that, okay, I want to develop this discourse further. I want to talk more about uh, the openness of the systems to external environment, how they react to information, how they produce information, how they generate themselves, how they respond to, to external stimuli, how they adapt to the environment and so on. So this is really just an invitation to think further in this direction. By the way, you also have the insight tab here, which will always recommend you the next idea. And here it's proposing you to do the same thing, to look at the connection between these topical clusters and usually when you click proceed, the system is actually going to choose them for you. So in this case, for instance, here it proposes to think of a new connection between structural patterns and plants and how there are those different uh, structures uh, uh, with the trees and the mushrooms and uh, rhizomes, I guess, as well. We could add it into this. So again, to think about uh, these analogies from nature, how they could be used to describe different structures of organization as well. And when we click proceed, we will move further in this recommendation system. It will always take you through 
some kind of loop but the elements in the loop will always be a little bit different so here it proposes us to focus on actually bridging the gaps together again and once uh, we've done that then it says select the most influential nodes so in this case informi information structure society because uh, this text is talking a lot about that and then delete them from the graph something we've done already to see what's hiding behind them and this is an iterative process you can repeat it as many times as you need to come to the insights you want in general Infranodus does not show you one truth it's an instrument to look through a text and to get a different perspective and to kind of analyze it in the many different ways and from many different viewpoints by the way if you deleted the words uh, and then you want to bring them back into the graph to see the original structure just click this button here all these removed words will be returned back here okay so we see here that it's a system so for example my recommendation to myself if I wrote this text would be to maybe speak a little bit less of a system and kind of focus more on the secondary topics that exist in this text so for example about interactions and the social context physical boundaries maybe explore the term uh, that is related to the, the notion of physical more then speak a little bit more about let's say information so all these smaller topics which are present within the text also the environment change and tree uh, they could be expanded a little bit further then I would look in the, into the inside panel and find the connections here remove a few more words and reiterate through the process looking at the essence looking through inside following the advice here so here it actually advises me to return the notes back to see what comes up and to you know think of the new connections and the new clusters and so on so this is how it works and this is a way to use Infranodus to have a different perspective on your text on what you're writing to add some thoughts in um, if you're interested to actually use it um, as an editor you can also use it uh, here one other use case of Infranodus is of course when you want to present a certain idea visually to somebody else and in that case you have to build the, the network from scratch because um, it's not possible to make it show a text in a certain way as it uses uh, a very precise algorithm of converting it into a network so you never know what's going to come out and if you have a clear message to make you probably have to construct the graph by yourself or use the existing graph and edit it a little bit so for instance you could say that you know uh, let's say the notion of uh, component and boundary are connected you can select them both click link and then they become one node and then you could also say that uh, let's say the notion of sympoetic and sympoesis are linked and it's actually one word and you're going to use sympoesis for it then it becomes one word and so on so basically this is a way how you can continuously um, edit your graph filter it and kind of bring it to a clear representation of your argument if this is the intention then it can be made public here and then shared using the link that will appear here